Would watching this video make you feel nauseous? Why do some people feel motion sickness and others don't? Feeling nauseous is the result of a network of processes in the body that we don't fully understand. But with a combination of brain scans and machine learning, a new study in the Journal of Physiology is starting to unravel what's going on and could even predict which people are more susceptible than others based on the structure and connections in their brain. Hi, I'm James Ruffle. I am a medical doctor. I work as an honorary research fellow here at the Wingate Institute of Neurogastroenterology and I'm also a radiology registrar. Identifying people who are more susceptible to nausea is really important and that's the, that's the aim of the game, that's what we're trying to do here by understanding how nausea is processed in the first place and gives us the idea of if we can identify who's susceptible. There's a long history of researching this, going back to the early days of space travel. The original nausea studies, a lot of them came from the aerospace industry, where things like NASA or whatever, rate limiting step for space travel was how nauseous people felt. It's an incredibly complex experience and people have spent decades trying to understand what makes people tick. But this is about much more than just motion sickness. It's clearly a problem. It's clearly a problem in healthcare for chemotherapy or pregnancy, or not least, you know, a huge range of medicines we prescribe that seem to make people feel nauseous. So how do you go about studying something like this? We'll put people in a scanner, we'll show them this video, and then we will map areas in the brain that light up, that become more active during this stimulus. They looked at the activity in the brain, as well as the underlying structure. And what we did is we mapped these areas of the brain that are more active and how they link together in synchrony to produce this kind of network of processing nausea. The idea is to see if what's going on in the brains of people who feel unwell is different to that of the unaffected participants. Does the severity of nausea correspond to particular brain characteristics, its activity or shape? Now in our study we identified areas of the brain such as the cingulate cortex, uh, the nucleus accumbens, the thalamus which were all involved, the amygdala, the uh, chordate putamen which we also identified in our study, the lucus cerealis, areas of the brainstem which all appear critically involved. It seems that there is this area, this kind of network that's now developing for how nausea is processed. Both the activity and actual shape of specific brain regions seems to dictate how nauseous people feel. The next question was whether knowing this information about someone's brain was enough to predict whether they would be susceptible to nausea. To answer this, the team turned to artificial intelligence. We then took all this data, so again, multidimensional data, structural brain imaging, functional brain imaging, and their autonomic response. That's how the rest of the nervous system is behaving during the experiment. We provided this to a model, and we asked it to try and learn if an individual was susceptible or resistant to nausea. With all of these inputs, they first trained their system with about 70% of their data, and then tested it on the remaining 30%. And in fact, in our sample, it did very well. In fact, it predicted all of these testing subsets with 100% accuracy. Just by looking at the scans and data, the program accurately predicted whether all of these participants felt motion sickness after watching the video. But that comes with a really important caveat that this is a proof of concept model for our study. It's a small number of individuals. It's a very fine-tuned, homogeneous, single-minded so single kind of thing, a group of individuals. They're all very similar. And it's really important that we evaluate this on a larger number of people, and it's really important that we evaluate this also in clinical populations as well. If the team can validate their model across more diverse groups, it might make it possible to predict people's risk of feeling nauseous in response to things like medical treatments or pregnancy. And that's the first step in preventing it, making everything from a one-hour car journey to a nine-month pregnancy a little easier to stomach.